Hey everyone, happy new year. Uh, this is the second part uh, of the tutorial and in this one I'm going to show you how to make almost the same um, type uh, like a vector file in uh, Arnold Render. And the reason uh, for this is because uh, most of the graphic designers and art directors who just uh, recently started to work uh, with uh, Cinema 4D or any other 3D software, uh, most of uh, them just don't have a proper GPU card, so therefore you can't use GPU renders like uh, Octane or Redshift. So Arnold is a pretty good uh, tool to, to help you. Actually, it's super cool render, but the, th the thing is that sometimes it's just a bit too slow. But if you have enough patience, uh, it's going to be okay. So let's jump to Cinema 4D. Uh, uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to uh, work with this um, uh, shape. If you don't know, you need to import uh, Adobe Illustrator file, uh, which was saved as uh, Adobe Illustrator version 8 super important because uh, other versions at least versions that uh, newer they probably won't work uh, with Cinema 4D so don't forget to save a duplicated file as version 8 it's important okay so I created extrude uh, I take this uh, null object with uh, paths in it and uh, within it and uh, just drag and drop under extrude and here don't forget to on hierarchical uh, checkbox to make extrude go through all hierarchy and uh, look for all paths to work with them okay now i'm going in extrude object going to caps uh, tab uh, and uh, change the bevel size let's find something oh okay as you as you can see we immediately got some glitches let's go to display gaurant shading and um, as you can see the reason uh, for this, it's because uh, there is too thin, uh, those angles are there too thin and uh, therefore mm, uh, Sim4D just can't make bevels right on these parts. The closer the bevels to each other, the more, uh, the more probability that you're gonna have some troubles there. Actually, it's uh, quite common thing uh, when you work with uh, illustrator files especially when you have some some antiquous and uh, it's actually there is no much that you can do with it so it's just about finding the right aspect ratio for those curves other way you can uh, play around with if you go to pass and just try to change uh, so i select uh, selected all paths and uh, i just uh, changing the intermediate points from adaptive to natural or uniform i'll go for natural and just increase the uh, number of points. Uh, be careful though, uh, by increasing the number of points, you're uh, increasing also amount of polygons. So by going too high, you might uh, freeze the cinema because there are gonna be a lot of polygons to work with. And as you can see, it just, it's stuck. Oh, now it's working. Okay, and now go back to extrude, try to change the size. Again, as you can see, the, uh, the workflow speed not really um, responsible, so be careful with changing uh, the number of, of uh, dots, number of points <clears throat> with uh, on spline objects. So what I'm gonna do here, uh, I'm gonna uh, use uh, those two shapes, those two figures. Put, and I'm uh, gonna put them. I'm gonna put them in uh, under the different extra objects. So let's go to Arnold uh, tab here. Uh, choose IPR window. It's gonna create this IPR basically, which is uh, like a live view in the Octane. It's a basically preview window. Let's drag and drop it here by clicking on those three lines and holding uh, left my uh, left mouse button. Can't see anything because we need to create the light. Let's uh, go for Arnold tab and choose Arnold Sky. It immediately creates uh, this uh, white environment. In Arnold Sky, uh, here in main tab, go to color and uh, press arrow and choose uh, texture. And therefore, it asks us for choose the uh, HDRI or any other texture. Uh, so, as you can see, there are two dots. I'll press on the upper one 
in order to hide the sky from the viewport here but it still works in our live view uh, our IPR window uh, on the left now we're gonna create uh, Arnold material sorry it's here Arnold uh, surface uh, standard surface and drag and drop on our extrudes also I want to change the aspect ratio for the window I'm going to uh, edit render settings choose Arnold render and in output tab I'm gonna change the width and height for 2K. Let's go back to our standard surface material, open it, and uh, in base step change the color from white to black. And uh, basically now it's uh, something like a plastic material. Let's change it to 6 to make it more like a metal, or you can go for something like an Unreal, something like a uh, 0.2 or 1. Uh, or even lower or other option would be there is some presets that work quite good so they work quite good so you can go and choose metal or something else i went for metal and here you even have a, like a metal presets and you can play around with roughness let's go back to our our arnold sky and the rotated bit basically what i want to do here i want to highlight my bevels by uh, our hdri environment so our colorful HDRI map it gives us really super nice sleek uh, speculars on the bevels. As you can see, they are quite colorful. Uh, other option, if you want to hide the HDRI uh, from the camera, you can go to Arnold Sky in main tab, go to this camera uh, slider and just make it zero. What does it do? Basically, the HDRI map, it still affect uh, it still works, basically it still affects the objects in the scene but as you can see, we can't see it in the live viewer, in our IPR window it doesn't distract us from the, uh, from the object I think uh, black background works much better from this point, uh, basically we just need to create different lights with uh, ramps, with gradients on it and uh, put them in the scene in order to highlight our objects actually recently i saw a tutorial i think by vincent schwenk and uh, there was like a product lighting or something and uh, the technique there was quite the same so, so in order to achieve those nice like uh, product renders especially uh, something like this or this here it's a bit more, quite more advanced uh, material on it on the object but the idea uh, behind uh, this uh, product renders it's still the same it's about drawing the highlights drawing the speculars on your objects so this tutorial it has a range of uh, where you can uh, basically apply uh, those uh, this technique okay so let's go to our arnold sky or arnold tab sorry arnold light uh, quad light and from this point i want to create my camera and i'm gonna right mouse button press on it and here i'm going to rig and tags protection in order to lock position and the rotation cam camera position and rotation okay now it's locked our camera is here okay uh, let's go back to our arnold quite light move it back rotate it to highlight our objects on the back change the size move it a bit also as you can see we can here in ipr window we can change the camera there are like uh, two options several options active camera default camera and camera let's rename this one and call it locked camera and go back as you can see it's now renamed locked camera and if i press on it i always uh, gonna see my camera this one in the preview which is quite uh, handy because uh, we can set up our lighting and at the same time we can see how exactly this light uh, how the light affects uh, the object let's change let's go to our arnold quite light uh, let's rename it call it back change the intensity make it something like a zero uh, zero point two and uh, from this point we want to create some arnold material with a gradient or ramp on it and i'm going to use texture image material basically it's ask us for choose which material like a, which material we want to use here 
you can use your own uh, gradient which you can do in Photoshop or any other program uh, our node editor go to texture go to ramp RGB and connect this output from RGB to Arnold Beauty basically whatever you connect to this node for to this output Arnold Beauty it's gonna it, this is what you're gonna see it's gonna be like a final output for your material so I'm gonna do this, this one and I'm gonna rename this uh, material I'm gonna rename it as backpack ramp and uh, in this uh, ramp RGB I'm gonna choose type U or V it doesn't matter actually basically like a direction of your from uh, from bottom to top or from left to right and uh, I'm going to back to our back uh, backlight actually let's call it backlight press uh, go to main tab and here press on that arrow and uh, choose shader network and now it's asked us for which shader shader basically which material we want to use here and I'm gonna drag and drop this back ramp so what does it mean if I uh, change uh, here camera from 0 to 1 I'm gonna see my light in the viewport and what we did we just we created the uh, material we created the gradient uh, on it and then we drag and drop our material to our light basically we applied the gradient to the light and from this point whatever I do with my gradient in the material uh, it will affect it will appears it will appear sorry in in the backlight here and from this point we're just gonna uh, create different uh, ramps different gradients with colors or just a grayscale gradients and uh, by those gradients we're gonna affect our highlights our speculars on the object and by doing that we're just basically gonna draw our speculars on our on our object it's immediately uh, you, you immediately can see it on the object let's go back to our backlight and turn it off from the uh, from the view um, I think uh, from this point I want to highlight our front part I'm gonna copy paste the material rotate it okay let's go to our front light let's rename it front light let's create let's copy paste the that material rename it call it front ramp front ramp go to our front light and drag and drop that material and basically from this point it's more about the arch part of it like it's more about uh, designing stuff and uh, just playing around with colors with uh, gradients and uh, yeah So from this point, I think um, before I move on, I think I want to play around with uh, with the bevels on our figures. Uh, and the reason for this is because I think, uh, as you can see here on the preview, uh, there is not much um, kind of specular fading, uh, like a, a specular uh, interesting speculars on the edges. And the reason for this uh, is basically we don't have uh, um, we have like a s quite small uh, bevels and we want to extend them a bit more to give more interesting details, light details on the <clears throat> on the sides. So I'll go back to my figures extrude and then cap tab and uh, just change the uh, bevel size. Okay, I feel that I'm all right with current with new bevels. So from this point, we just need to go on with our lights and uh, set up a few more. I think one on the left, one on the right, and maybe uh, one somewhere in the front, like a, in the front bottom, somewhere here. Uh, so let's do this, and uh, the technique uh, stays the same. I'll uh, I'm gonna copy the gradient texture, rename it, then create a new light and assign a new texture to to the new light. And yeah, let's go. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so uh, my cinema has stuck, so I had to uh, reopen uh, it again, and uh, I lost the uh, last steps, so I had to recreate uh, last two lights that I made. Uh, but basically, uh, the last thing that uh, I finished on was uh, that I was trying to, I was uh, I was trying to figure out why. Uh, it something uh, fell off and uh, the reason uh, for that it's probably because there are two things so the first one we are lacking of uh, nice uh, gradients uh, here in the top uh, bottom uh, first and uh, the second is that um, it's quite uh, an intricate uh, shape to work with um, um, because of the uh, type, the font itself is uh, antiqua like and uh, it's also because we have um, here and here uh, the shape is quite thin and therefore it's quite hard actually to get nice bevels on those parts because uh, uh, it might uh, look weird it kind of goes off uh, because uh, extrude object has uh, sometimes um, slight problems with extruding the the curves uh, with uh, thin uh, thin parts like a, with a, uh, in the thin areas like uh, here here or here. In order to uh, solve uh, this issue, uh, firstly let's uh, finish with our lighting and uh, set up one more light here in the front uh, bottom. And uh, after that, I'm going to show you how I, I can, uh, how we can solve uh, the problem with the thin uh, parts of our shape. Okay, so I've just uh, I just finished with uh, the last light. From this point, we now want to solve this issue with uh, with bevels and the feeling uh, that uh, something uh, feels off. What you can do, you can do uh, volume measure. Uh, in order to do so, you need to have at least a cinema version twenty one, I believe, or twenty. Sorry, uh, can't remember at the moment, but. Uh, I think uh, they added, uh, Maxon added uh, volume, uh, builder volume measure in version 21. So uh, let's create a volume builder, put font object uh, inside volume builder, then volume, volume measure, and put volume bil builder inside volume measure. Let's go to volume builder, object tab, and change vo voxel size something to on the round three, two, one. Okay, uh, so be, uh, be mindful and careful uh, w while you are working with the uh, volume builder because uh, high, uh, high mesh density, a uh, huge amount of polygons. If you want to put it in other words, uh, might uh, freeze your cinema, so be cautious and uh, go with uh, small steps in terms of increasing voxel size. Uh, I'm feel all right uh, with uh, current uh, polygon count, uh, polygon uh, mesh density, and here I'm going to add uh, SDF smooth. Uh, change the smoothing, uh, smoothing uh, strength. So what uh, we are doing here, basically, uh, we are trying to to preserve our font shape and uh, at the same time uh, give it a uh, nice uh, bevels in order to get a smooth uh, reflection fading, nice smooth reflections on the side and uh, on the front uh, of our type. Okay, let's uh, let's move our metal material from extrude object from font to volume measure in order to apply that material. Okay, and uh, now 
you probably immediately see the difference. So let me show you. Okay, so this one, uh, this is our new uh, mesh, our uh, volume builder. And uh, take a look how reflection work here and here. And now let's go back to our original mesh, which basically was a simple extrude. I'll turn off volume mesh and volume builder. And yeah, just compare. It immediately feels more flat because we don't have those uh, fat <laughs> bevels. Uh, you still can play. You can play around uh, with uh, volume builder and volume measure. Try different uh, uh, voxel size, maybe uh, um, play around with SDF smooth, and maybe even with uh, here in volume measure with voxel range threshold. Uh, which uh, increase or decrease, uh, kind of extend uh, the voxel uh, size in some sense. Uh, so, and uh, also I want to do the same for our uh, figure shape. So I'm going to volume uh, builder, volume measure, uh, put figures extrude in volume builder, and then in volume, volume measure. And let's uh, move our metal material from extrude object to volume measure. Okay, cool. Uh, from this point, uh, what I'm gonna do? I'm going. I'm gonna turn off all my lights and uh, then uh, turn it back on uh, one by one in order to see how each one of them affect the scene. Backlight. Uh, okay, I think it's a bit too too acid. So bottom, nice. Front uh, feels a bit off. Left, it's all right. Right, it's all right. Okay, let's work uh, with. Uh, I believe it was front light and uh, back light. Let's work with the front light first. Let's go to our front light, from here front ramp material, and yeah, just let's try different colors. So I changed uh, the front light colors, uh, front light gradient, and uh, now I'm going back to my uh, backlight and uh, play around with backlight uh, ramp. So I, I'm going to back ramp material, I'm gonna open it, and from here change the colors, probably just get rid of all the, uh, that uh, green color. Okay, and uh, from here, let's go to our render settings. Uh, let's, uh, as I said previously, choose Arnold Render here. Uh, go to Arnold Render settings and change camera AA. 
which stands for um, anti Ellison. Uh, and uh, the if you know how to use Octane Render, basically it's kind of alternative to to samples in Octane. Actually, you can see it here. It says how many samples it's gonna shoot while final render during final render. So the higher this value, the less noise you would see in final render. And from here, let's turn off multipass imaging image and bit PNG and um, just uh, choose the location where you want to render and press render.